Hello everyone, welcome to 3311 Software Design for 2020. In this video, I would like to go over with you uh, the important administrative issues about the course. And please know that uh, changes might still happen within uh, the first two weeks uh, of the course, which is until September 23rd. But most of the details are final, so you can definitely try to uh, plan your schedule according to what I'm going to present for the rest of the video. Okay, let's start with uh, the uh, slides and then I will, I will also go over the course syllabus with you which is available on the lectures website so about the, your instructor which is me uh, how may you call me uh, I most prefer Jackie you can just call my first name that's absolutely fine if you really want to call me Professor Jackie Professor 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 Wong Sir etc that's fine just uh, Jackie is most preferred when you need advice for the course, please speak uh, speak to me as early as possible. So if you really struggle with any part of the course, don't struggle for too long. You want to speak to uh, speak with me for advice as soon as possible. So throughout the semester, feel free to suggest any ways to helping you learn or any ways you think uh, I should really improve for my teaching. So I release lots of uh, lecture videos and also tutorial videos for, uh, for your learning. So if there's any suggestion you would like to make, please let me know. Okay, about the course information, uh, there will be a Moodle or they now call eClass uh, site. If you simply click on that, and then you will see uh, uh, shortly before the start of the term uh, ab about this, uh, you should really sh uh, see the icon for 3311. So we have a combined site for section A and section E. Okay, so both sections share the same link, the, sh uh, the same site. So we're going to make announcement from there for both sections there, announcement. So please check your email regularly for the announcement. There will also be a course forum. Subscription are, uh, you are subscribed to the uh, forum by default, but if you really uh, don't want to be subscribed to the email, you can uh, actually also manually unsubscribe it, which I don't, wouldn't recommend, but it's your call. And also the lab instructions will be posted on the course e-class. And also the, you have to take weekly quizzes, which I'll talk about in greater detail later. And uh, again, please check your emails regularly, uh, always for announcement or any tips for su uh, succeeding in the course. And very important, uh, if you're not enrolled in the course yet, if you're on the wait list, you want to send me an email as soon as possible with your name, student number, and your pass uh, your passport ID, so I can add you to the uh, e-class or the Moodle, so give you access so that you can get lab instructions, uh, also you can take the quizzes, okay? No extension will be granted for any of the grading components. You have to assume as if you are in the course already. So you have to keep up with all the lectures and tutorials, and also complete the labs, and also quizzes. There'll be no extension. So it is your responsibility to get in touch with me uh, at your earliest convenience, no later than um, the the end of the first week. Okay, let's say Monday, September fourteenth. That'll be the latest time to actually get in touch with me. Okay. So the required study materials, I also talk about it when we get to the uh, course syllabus. But the main source would be the lectures page. Uh, you can click on this. Maybe uh, many of you have already started early uh, for the course uh, based on the materials I sent to you. But you can just go there and search for 3311 under fall 2020. And then you can see everything's there. It doesn't require any login. It's just public. And then the course syllabus uh, is also going to be posted on the lectures page. So I'm going to talk about it. Uh, together with you, okay? So that's the course syllabus. Uh, I will go over section by section. Some section will actually worth uh, time ex uh, ex explaining to you the rationale, and some section I'll just mention that you can also read it by yourself, okay? So there's a syllabus for both sections, section A and section E, okay? So now let me talk about the course policy quickly, okay? So what uh, the most important thing is about plagiarism, okay? So when you submit your labs or your projects, you claim that it's solely your work. So uh, you, you, you cannot really copy or share uh, any parts of your work uh, during any stages of your developments. And TAs will actually check uh, submissions for every lab and also the projects for uh, suspicious submissions. And then if we find any suspicious submission, we report it to Lausanne right away. Okay, so for labs and project, uh, you, there will be uh, it will be individual work only. For labs, it's typically the case that you don't you cannot really work in groups. But for the project this year, because the course is also run completely online, we have designed the project so that it's doable within a per uh, with an individual person. Given that you you start early enough, right? If you start only in the final two weeks, of course it doesn't matter if you have a group or not. You just cannot finish that, right? 
Okay, for plagiarism, please stick to the policy. I will have another page to talk about what you should really not do to get yourself into trouble. And about the online submission and assessment. Okay, so there will be stringent deadlines for both. Okay, and for labs and the projects, you have to use the submit command that you uh, you probably uh, prob probably do for many courses already. For, uh, for example, 2030, that's how you submitted your labs previously. Use the submit, submit command electronically to the EECS server. And also, there will be an exam at the end of the term, uh, which will be done on eClass or the Moodle, also with a stringent uh, timing requirements. And the date uh, is going to be, and the date and time will be announced by the register office. At, th at this moment, we don't know when they are, but they will be, uh, it will be within the exam period. Okay, and then all the deadlines will be on the Eastern time zone, Toronto time. So if you are in Asia, if you're in Europe, or you other time zone, please always uh, respect the uh, Eastern time zone. You have to do your calculation, please. No exception will be made if you calculate it wrong. Okay, and then um, you also have to take a uh, proactive action or steps to or uh, to seek assistance if you really think you're gonna have some technical problem to. Uh, maybe to watch the video uh, lectures or tutorials or to submit your uh, labs or project or to complete your quizzes on the e-class. You have to get in touch either with me. Uh, in that case, I can also redirect you to someone who can help you. You want you, you have to be responsible for this, okay? And also for the rationale about this policy, you can read it. Uh, my top priority will be your learning and also fairness for the uh, grading. So that's why I don't want to give unnecessary accommodation uh, unless it can be really justified but please make sure you take action to do your part before uh, anything can be discussed okay and then so this is a policy here that's very important so throughout the course the quizzes the labs the project and exam everything will be individual work it will be considered as a breach of the academic honesty policy if you ever collaborate any work together with your fellow students or someone outside uh, the class, right? It will be considered as cheating. And all the labs and projects will be uh, developed individually and teamwork is forbidden, okay? And then the main rationale is even in the normal time, we, we, we got many students actually reporting that their partner are not being very responsible because they might just withdraw in the last minutes or they are simply not being responsive to requests or they simply got overdue progress. And also it will be uh, very difficult given that everybody cannot see uh, each other physically. So it will be difficult for you, for you to find a suitable partner anyway. You might just waste uh, maybe the first or two weeks in the projects finding your partner. That's not a very wise uh, way of using your time. So instead, we try to make the project so that it will be doable within the given time, uh, the time given to you. You will be given five weeks to do your project. That should be more than enough, assuming that you start in time. It's a very critical assumption I'm making, okay? So no teamwork. And then late enrollment, it's just about for, for you, uh, for those of you who are in the waiting list, please make sure contact with me as soon as you can to actually uh, within the first week to, uh, to let me give you access to the e-class. So you can take quizzes, you can get instruction for the lab. Okay, so I'm just very quick walkthrough of, of the most important policies uh, for the course. Please read them through carefully. Make sure you don't get yourself into trouble. We want you to focus on learning, but on the other hand, you have to be responsible for the uh, legitimate actions uh, when you take the course. Okay, so section number two, it's about just a little bit more information about academic uh, integrity over here. Okay, let me just go over the important ones. So for labs and projects, again, individual work for both labs and projects. And then uh, if convincingly suspicious submissions are found by the TA and also being uh, necessary by myself, we're going to report it to the song. Uh, student service right away for formal investigation. We are not in the, we are, we wouldn't get involved in that anymore. Uh, we'll hand it to the school. So please make sure you really res uh, respect the policy. Again, the reason we are doing this is we want to ensure fairness and also for standard for the course. So some example here, some example actions you really want to avoid to uh, protect yourself from trouble. You don't want to discuss any code level details with anyone about your solution. And also, you don't want to discuss anything that's very concrete about the steps in order to uh, develop the solution. That will very easily end up having uh, your submission and other people's submission looking very similar, in which case we will we'll report. Okay? 
and also you don't share any parts of your code, not even on a screenshot. Or simply have a let's say if you if your uh, if your friend in the course they simply ask you to show them briefly on the Zoom uh, by sh uh, screen sharing. Who knows if they actually may take a screenshot and then simply copy the code verbatim. You get you'll get yourself into trouble if you do it. Okay, and then. You should never give in, giving or receiving instructions about how exactly, what exactly you should type, uh, actually, uh, to really about this particular lab or projects. When you actually go to, go to the TA for help, I already uh, gave the TA explicit instructions. They are going to help you by you uh, how to use debugger and also breakpoints. That will be the best way to really help you become a, a better software developer. I think that's the best thing we can give to you, rather than just telling you what to type. That's another way to go, all right? And, however, it will be acceptable if you simply ask somebody else to, about how do you write a loop in general, for example. However, it will be unacceptable if you ask, uh, ask specifically how can I write a loop for solving this problem. Hopefully, you can see the difference. And the best way if, you re if your friend really asks you for help, so the best way is to help them how to clarify the instructions if you find uh, yourself uh, have better understanding or to show them how to use uh, breakpoints in debugger. I think these are the two things you can help them the most in the long term. Okay, for weekly quizzes, which I'll give you much greater details, it's going to be also completed individually. It will be considered as cheating if, if you collaborate with someone else completing a quiz it will definitely be considered as cheating, okay? And also, after you have attempted your quiz, let's say your friend is going to take it later, if you share with, with them about uh, what the questions are about, it's also considered as uh, academ uh, academically dishonest, okay? So please make sure you don't do that. And uh, for reporting cases over here, I will really tend to believe every one of you, every one of uh, my students is honest. But if you really believe there's some really unfair instances happening, let me know. I will definitely take action. Okay, please. Hopefully everybody can just focus on learning and this will be the ugly part I have to deal with if I have to. But make sure everybody's uh, re re uh, respecting to, to this policy. Okay, so uh, section number three is about uh, myself. I will have office hour. It will be 4.5 hours per week. So you definitely got enough time to get in touch with me. But if you really cannot make it, send me an email. I'm more than happy to make appointment with you. So it'd be four to 5.30. Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, okay? And then, so that's the prerequisite for this course. You can read it through, make sure uh, if you don't satisfy it, you will be being wrote at some point. So please make sure you are qualified to uh, take this course. Eventually, what kind of uh, help can you get uh, in this course? You will get uh, the forum from the Moodle or the E-Class. I will be moderating the forum myself and also some qualified TAs. And also my office hour, as I said, there'll be 4.5 hours weekly, or if you need additional time, make an appointment with me. And uh, the scheduled lab session, I will talk about it. It will be three hours weekly. And also there will be optional scheduled Q&A sessions, three hours weekly, right? So these are all the available hours for helping you to, com uh, to complete the course uh, successfully. Okay. Okay, let me go to the next one. Uh, course description over here, you can read it, but once you follow through the uh, week one's uh, materials, you will get a sense about some basic knowledge about what this course is about. So I'm not gonna go through very much, okay? So you can read it for sure. And by the course is about design. And these are the learning outcomes that we're going to go through throughout the course. So when we evaluate you, we really want to uh, make sure you have, uh, you have satisfied learning outcome one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'll try to revisit them uh, once we have achieved them uh, uh, up to some milestone for the course. For now, let's uh, just have you read it, okay? And then let's now talk about the textbook. There will be no absolutely required textbook, but there will be some recommended textbook. But the required study materials will be, number one, my lecture slides, number two, my lecture recordings, number three, the tutorials that I gave to you, and number four, any related uh, notes that I uh, supply to you. So these are the mandatory study materials. And if you want to do something extra to really broaden and strengthen your knowledge, uh, you can read these books if you wish. So in some slides, I also specify what's the relevant chapter for this particular textbook. Object-Oriented Software Construction is a very classic textbook on using design by contracts and also design principles. So for, for those of you who want to explore more, uh, feel free to read it, and I'm more than happy to discuss with you any 
uh, any question you might have about the textbook. So for this particular textbook, it will be made available a PDF will be will be made available in the e class uh, sites. Uh, in the beginning of the term. So for now, you may not see it, but once the term begins, you will see that, okay? And there are certain reference book. So number one would be a uh, touch of class, which I mentioned briefly in the pre-study materials. So this one here is available from the library, your York U library. So as long as you log in using your Passport York uh, credential, you can get access to it, the e-copy, uh, e okay? There's another book over here. It's called the... Uh, Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software. So we're going to talk about a number of common design patterns for OO software in this course. It's not really exhaustive. For those of you who want to explore further, you can definitely uh, get access to this book. It's a very classic one. They definitely talk about a much more complete uh, shopping list of uh, design patterns. And the language they use is C++, um, just another language. Okay. And number three is only for reference. So we are going to have you draw design architectural diagram. And also we will have some specialized lecture for that. I would say this book is only for reference. If you want to see more explanation about some notation, or if you want to see more examples, you can get access to this book. It's also electronic copy, right? Okay, so that's about the uh, uh, some optional study material. But the main one will be lectures and tutorials that I uh, created for you. I think they're more tailored for a more, uh, a a more positive um, learning experience, I hope. Okay, about grading scheme. How are we going to uh, evaluate you? Okay, I'll talk about the percentage first and then I'll talk about how your grades will be calculated. Let's talk about one by one. So uh, there will be 12 quizzes. You can think about there will be 12 uh, weeks of lectures and every lecture, uh, every week of the lecture will be will have a corresponding uh, study quiz on the E-class. 2% each. So that's why you got 24% in total. And there will be one exam, comprehensive, it's gonna cover everything in the course, and then also also to be done on the E-class site, and 28%. So in total, you got 52%, okay? The format for the quizzes, I'll talk about it, and for exam, I will talk about the format for the exam, maybe when we get to towards the end of the term, I'll, I'll give you more guidance. And also you got lab number zero, which is to follow through a tutorial series I recently freshly created. And you just have to follow through the code that I uh, show you on the tutorial video, type them out uh, verbatim. And also there will be some small number of exercises for you to complete. Once you're done with them, simply submit, okay? So that's only 1%, but hopefully to encourage you to do it because lab zero is really meant to help you so that you wouldn't uh, struggle with the syntax or basic uh, concepts throughout the course. It's really created for your benefits. Okay, we got lab one, lab two, and also for lab two, you also got some design diagram. We got lab number three, and also for lab number three, you have to complete some design documents, which is more than a diagram. I will give you some templates, and the reason we are doing this, only 2%, that was really give you, uh, so we can give you feedback upon your submission. Later on, you will have to do a larger version of this design documents. That one will be 10% for the project. So whatever feedback you get from this uh, design document here, you can apply that to the final documents. So just uh, uh, for your better learning. And for the projects, it will be individual work, but you will be given five weeks to do it. So if you really start on day one or day two, day two is okay, but if you start early enough, it's doable by individual person, by individual student. Again, we got much help for you. And also you can definitely always get in touch with me if you struggle. There will be phase one and phase two, roughly about two to three weeks after the project is released, we'll give you a 2% check very quickly. I'll talk about the uh, check uh, rubric a little bit later, but 2% should be as long as you can pass certain threshold of the percentage of the starter test we give to you, you can get a 2%. I'll be more precise later. And then the rest of the uh, software part will be 18%, okay? So that's about the uh, grade distribution, okay? Okay, so let's now talk about how your grade is going to be uh, calculated, okay? Uh, the main principle is, so by York Senate, they uh, approved this particular common grading scheme for undergraduate uh, faculty. So that's the main scheme I'm following. Basically, it's a table summarizing, but you can see the more uh, detailed description in that site. You can simply uh, click on this particular link and then you will see, okay? There's a, docu there's a page over there. 
So we, for example, we got A plus, the qualitative description for A plus would be exceptional. And also for B, it would be good and etc. right? So now the way we're going to calculate your grade for the course goes like this. Okay, it's slightly different, maybe slightly different from how uh, your grade was calculated uh, previously, right? I just want to tell you, this is how it's going to work for this course. Okay, for each grading unit, for example, lab one, lab two, project, or the quiz, for each grading unit, you will be assigned a row mark, which may, may or may not be out of 100, maybe out of 250, maybe out of 255, whatever, right? So now, the row mark is not really exactly the grade that you got. For example, if you got 90 marks out of 100, or if you get 40 marks out of 100, it doesn't really directly correspond to the standard uh, cutoff for the letter grade, not necessarily, okay? So the letter, uh, the row mark is mainly for, for me to help to see your ranking around the class. So I can judge better to see which letter, which row marks cutoff should be considered as exceptional. For example, maybe for this particular, let's say for a particular lab, let me, let's say, if you get 76 out of 100, uh, uh, letter grade should be a, a B plus. However, maybe that particular lab is a very straightforward and easy lab or very easy assessment. In that case, maybe you will only get a C. On the other hand, let's say you got 45 for another assessment, let's say another lab, which is much more difficult. In that case, uh, normal cutoff should give you an E. However, I might decide in order to be passing, uh, 45 should be enough, so I'll just give you a D. So it really depends on individual assessment and also my interpretation, okay? It's really important to see the interpretation. What does it really mean for each assessment? What does it really mean to be A+, plus? what does it really mean to be C+, plus and etc. right? So they also give myself more flexibility to see how everybody is doing so I can adjust the uh, cutoff more fairly, okay? Okay, and then finally, the weighted sums of all the individual cutoff for each assessment will be uh, used to calculate final cutoff uh, cutoffs for the final grade. Let me give you one example. So this document over here, an example over here, this is a hyperlink. Click on that and then you will see this particular uh, documents over here, okay? Let's uh, take a look. I just want to give you an idea how things will be calculated. Also go through this document so you will have an idea. Let's say we have one example course, right? Let's say we have two grading components only. Let's say we got one single assignment and then we got an exam. Let's say assignment is 40% and the exam is 60%, let's say, okay? And then for assignments, the maximum row mark is actually 120. So everything's gonna be out of 120. And also for exam is out of 210, let's say. So let's say, uh, so we got this set, set up for two, ex two example students, right? So the same assignment exam, 40, 60, and then this, right? So that's the uh, the scheme. So now, let's say we got two students here. Student number one, they got 98, and also they got 169, right? First of all, to calculate the weighted sum for the row marks finally, right? The way you do it is simply by using 98 times uh, 40% plus 169 times uh, 60%, right? Using this, this, and this and this to calculate weighted sum. In that case, you will get 80.95. And also for student number two, if you do the same uh, the same math, this is the row, uh, this is row mark. As, but as I said before, the row mark is only for, for me to rank the student to decide to decide qualitatively what should be the, uh, the, the, the deserving letter grade. So what would be the final grades for these two students? Uh, let's take a look at student number one. Okay, if you look at student number one here, their final row mark is 80.95, okay? So now you should not have the misunderstanding that 80.95 should just be an A, not necessarily, okay? The way to look at that is to really think about the cutoff for individual assessment. There will be one cutoff for assignments, there will also be a cutoff for exam. So let me show you here, okay? So that's why every time when the, an assessment result is returned back to you, you will be given a mapping between uh, row marks and also the letter grade. For example, let's say over here, so the cutoff for assignments over here is 110, and also the cutoff for the exam over here is 205, right? So now you can see uh, that's for A+, okay? So now if you, uh, and then, what would be the final cutoff for A+, for the course? 
as I said before, is going to be determined by the weighted sum of the individual cutoff for A+. Plus. So you can see over here, 110 over here, that's for assignments, which is 40%, right? It's 40% and this is 60%. So we'll find a cutoff for A plus will be 110 over here times uh, 40% plus 205, the cutoff for exam times uh, 60%. And then it's going to get 95.24. Uh, uh, so this will be the cutoff overall for the course. So now, uh, and also similarly, you can see the cutoff for A will be 83. So that means student, uh, student A is not actually going to get an A because his cutoff is actually not high enough to be uh, for the cutoff for A. So notice that every assessment is going to have the individual cutoff based on the ranking for your role marks. I'm going to judge according to the qualitative description approved by the Senate. That's what I'm going to do. And then for final cutoff for the course grade is going to be determined by the weighted sum for individual cutoff as I just calculated for you. Okay, so now student number one, they are going to get B plus over here because the weighted sum for B plus is going to be 76 Point five. That's exactly the cutoff for uh, that's uh, the cutoff uh, that the uh, student number uh, one is going to satisfy. Okay. Similarly, you can see for student number two over here, his final uh, their final mark is actually forty four oh five. So forty four oh five. So you got to look at this column here. So it's going to be uh, forty four oh five. It's just about here. So they will get a D. But if you think about forty four point five. 44.05%, normally it should be a failing grade like an E, but in this case, this student is not gonna fail because according to my judgment uh, by individual cutoff and the weighted sum of that will tell you tell me this student should be receive it, receiving a passing grade. So so having the, uh, so the letter grade for your individual uh, assessment is the important part you want to know, especially for the cutoff. The row marks value is not the important part to focus on. Okay, that's my point. Okay, take a look at this example here. If you are having trouble with understanding this, let me know and then I'll, I can explain to you again. But hopefully this quick walkthrough, you have enough basis to uh, think about it, okay? Okay, that's about how your letter grade is gonna be calculated, which is very important. So let's, let's now move on to another section here, okay? So now let's talk about how this course, uh, the schedule for this course, okay? Originally, we actually got for section uh for section E, okay, for section E you got lectures on Monday and Wednesday, right? And also for section A, you got lectures on Tuesday and when uh Tuesday and Thursday. And also for uh section A, you also got a lab session starting from 8 30 to 10 and 10 to 11, uh 10 to 10 30 to 11. And also for section E. You also got a lab session from 2.30 to 4 and also 4 to 5.30, right? So the ones I'm circle, uh, I'm boxing right now, so because the course is going to be run uh, be run completely online, we're not going to have any physical contact with you. So I decided to really best use the time for the TA. In the first instance, we're going to run the following plan, okay? We're going to cancel this morning lab session here, and also we're going to cancel this particular uh, evening uh, lab session here is going to be replaced by my office hour and also we're going to cancel the Wednesday lecture for section E We're going to cancel the Thursday lecture by section A. So this is that's why we got the following schedule Okay, that's the latest one. We're going to run through. Okay, so how are we going to run it? Uh, in principle All the time showing here are optional. Okay For this course the only components that you have to show up in time will be for the exam Okay, you have, you have to make sure, for example, it might be December 15th, maybe from 9, uh, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. If, you have to show up in that time if that's the case, right? But other than that, before the um, uh, exam period, uh, everything is going to be submitted asynchronously. So that's uh, something I want to uh, tell you. Of course, for labs, projects, and quizzes, they also have deadline you have to respect. So now uh, let's talk about this. For Monday, uh, 5.30 to 7.00, and also Tuesday, 2.30 to 4, Eastern Time, Toronto Time, right? We're going to use that for Q&A. 
we go uh myself is going to uh hold the session live on the zoom and it will be recorded it's optional but it's mainly for answering your question related to the lecture materials or any tutorial materials it's really for your learning for for it's uh help for you and then for the schedule labs we have two sessions here so wednesday 10 to 11 30 and also Wednesday, 2.30 to 4. So these two sessions, you can join any one of them if you wish. Uh, the TAs will be providing their Zoom details. I will publish the detail when the turn starts. You don't have to worry. For week number one, your job is to do lab zero, which will be self-guided. So we don't need a TA for week one just yet. But starting from week number two, TAs will be there holding their Zoom session to answer your questions. Okay. So now uh, these two will be the uh, lab session. So for each one of them, don't worry about which session you're registered. So you can attend any one of them. We don't really check attendance. Uh, you only attend it if you find it necessary for your learning. I'll be very surprised if you need none of them. Okay. And then my office hour, as I explained before, so these are my office hours in the first instance. If I need to change, I'll definitely let you know. And if you need to make an appointment with me because uh, none of the time actually work for you, please let me know. I'm happy to accommodate. Okay, so you can read it exactly what I said. But for the Q&A session there, they, this is a Zoom ID you have to join in. Okay, it's on the syllabus. You can uh, uh, see the details there. Okay, so that's about the uh, schedule over here, which is different from the official schedule uh that that's published for on the register uh, office we're just doing a proper subset of that because we're running completely online we can try to use our time more wisely and save the resources for better uh, tutoring you okay so now let's talk about the learning schedule for this particular course okay there will be no live lectures uh that they're that going to be held for every week so well, as I said before, we're gonna use the lecture time, only two of them for the live Q&A sessions. So what we're gonna do instead, I'm going to pre-record uh, every uh, lecture as videos and then I'll publish them, I'll make them available to you so you can, have, you can have the whole week to study them at your own pace. That's really for your benefits to take, uh, take advantage of this online nature. Okay, let me just go over the, uh, the pattern with you. Okay, you can also see the pattern. It's really regular pattern for every week. Okay, let me just show you here. Let's now start from week number one. Okay, from week number one, official start will be September 9th. So I'm going to release uh, week one's lecture, but it's already released for your early start. So this one is already released, so you don't have to worry. But in principle, I will release the new lecture material, uh, the lecture videos on every Wednesday. If I can release earlier, maybe a few days earlier, I will try. But in principle, the latest time will be Wednesday, in principle, okay? So for every Wednesday, I'm gonna release a new week, uh, the new material for the week. You have about a week to do it. But for every uh, lecture material that's released, the next week, Monday and Tuesday, the Q and A session are going to be focus, uh, going to focus on them. So uh, my hope is once you get the videos on Wednesday, uh, plan your time through, they will be broken down into about 20 to 30 minutes chunk. So plan your time to watch at least one to two chunks per day so that you can also take advantage of the Q&A session on the next Monday and Tuesday, okay? And then about two days, uh, so it will be released on Wednesday, about two days later, I will open the quiz associated with that particular week's uh, um, lecture material. So for example, quiz number one is going to be focused on the week one's material. The quiz will be open for exactly one week. So quiz, the quizzes will always be uh, open on a Friday. And also the quiz will be closed on a Friday as well. You can see, for example, over here on week number two, if you look at week number two over here, on a Friday, we're going to close the quiz, which I opened one week before. And then I'm going to open a new quiz that's going to focus on the, the new material released that week. So the pattern goes on and on and on, okay? And also, if you look at the sidebar over here, uh, just because Lab Zero is freshly recorded, I originally planned it to be just about five hours, but it turns out, because I really try to be comprehensive and thorough in explaining to you the common problems that you might write into. So it goes to about 10 hours in total. I know it's long, but I'm hoping that by thoroughly following them through, honestly, really can help you to uh, can, can reduce some suffer uh, for the course because it's a new language. So you will definitely uh, hit some uh, new learners block, but I'm hoping to get rid of the block as soon as possible for you. That's why I really try to record some video. So that's why for lab number zero, I will give you about two weeks to really re uh, to finish that. But I would suggest 
Lab 0 is actually going to help you quite a bit for Lab 1, the basics. So maybe for week number one, where you don't have any submission due, spend about six hours at least. Finish the first six hours for Lab 0 uh, tutorial video at least, because you'll be most free for the first week without any deadline. And then for the uh, second week, you can uh, finish the remaining about four hours for the lab zero. Of course, if you can finish a uh, lab zero tutorial in week week uh, week number one, that'll be awesome. Okay, and then uh, roughly speaking, you'll be given about two weeks for lab number one. So lab number one will be released on week number two, and then you got two weeks to do it. And also similarly for lab two. Okay, and then we have the reading week. So somehow we got only five weeks before the reading week. Okay. And then after the reading week, you will be doing some lab number three. It's more like a warm up exercise for the projects. So really pay attention to uh, the new framework that we're going to use for lab number three, in which case you will be given complete freedom to design your own classes and also your own design architecture. It's going to be a very rewarding exercise for you. So you're going to do that for lab three and the projects. And for the project, as I said, you will be given five weeks to do it. And then the first, uh, roughly speaking, the first three weeks will be phase number one. And then the remaining two weeks will be phase number two. Phase number one is mainly just to check, make sure you're on track to help you. Okay, and then we also got the exam over here. Okay, so hopefully you got a general structure for this particular um, calendar over here. Please go over that in detail. Uh, I don't want to make the video too long, so that's why I just briefly explain. Okay, and just uh, in case you're uh, you're not too sure about the acronym I'm using. So when I say W1, it's really about the lecture series number one for the, for that particular week. So just one, two, three, four until 12. And also quiz number one should be corresponding to uh, lecture series number one, right? And etc. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you over here. So that's about the calendar, okay? And then uh, let's talk about the quizzes specifically because you will do that on a weekly basis. You only start doing the quizzes, roughly speaking, from week number two. What well, you will be, uh, the quiz number one will be released on the Friday of September 11. So that's a starting point. But you got the entire week to do it. Okay, let me talk about the formats and some policy about the quizzes. Okay, first of all, what's the formats of the quizzes? Okay, number one, it's open booked. So feel free to refer to your lecture notes and feel free to refer to your own notes. That's absolutely fine. Okay. And then each quiz will be uh, open for its submission for a week. So you'll be released on, uh, okay, let me remind you again. You will be released on a Friday, right? Release on a Friday and also uh, close for its submission the Friday after, okay? It's, uh, and then it's, uh, I think it's set somewhere, okay? I, but I think it's 5 p.m., okay? But I'll remind you about uh, the deadline for every quiz, don't worry. So 5 p.m. just in principle, okay? Okay, so now every quiz will uh, consist, of, consist of between 10 and 20 questions, just in principle, just give you one example. There will be multiple choice, there will be matching answer, there will be true and false, okay? Uh, there might be some short answer as well, but any, any question you might take in the Moodle or E-class is possible, okay? But as long as you really follow through the lecture videos and also really try to reflect the ideas yourself, it should be fine. And also, if you got any confusion, please ask me in the Q&A session, okay? Okay, there's only one single attempt for the quiz, which means you only got one chance to really... So only take the quiz when you think you're ready, okay? I'll talk about readiness in just a moment. Only one single attempt, okay? And then the attempt is timed, and uh, there will be a fixed amount of time. Uh, I'm not too... I'm not... Uh, I think I will decide on a quiz... Uh, on a quiz by quiz basis. So, but in principle, you will be between 15 and 30 minutes, depends. Maybe some quiz will only take 15 minutes. Maybe some quiz will take a 30 minutes. I'll let you know beforehand, so you don't worry, okay? But just in principle, uh, up to 30 minutes. And then uh, during the one week period uh, that a quiz is enabled, you can choose any time block continuously that you will be free from distraction. So think about readiness, right? You are mentally ready, which means you're really uh, comfortable with the materials you learn from that particular lecture series. If you got any confusion, you, you should really either speak to me during the office hour, or you can also ask me questions uh, during the Q&A session on Monday and Tuesday, right? 
and the quiz is actually due on Friday. So even after the Monday and Tuesday's Q&A, you still got three days to complete a quiz. So you definitely got enough time to think through the materials. Again, the skin, the skin over here is really designed for your learning. Okay, for me, it would take me more time actually, but as long as that's good for your learning, I'm okay. And then also make sure you're physically ready. So what do I mean by that? So I want to make sure uh, once the once the time block you choose, maybe you prefer to take it maybe around the midnight, maybe you prefer to take it maybe 5 a.m. in the morning, that's okay. As long as you can sure, you can be sure once you start a quiz, the time it starts, you will be uninterrupted by either network failure or maybe a computer freezes or maybe someone will knock your door to deliver some puzzle to you. That, that shouldn't happen, right? You want to make sure you can really be concentrated for that particular time slot. You will be responsible for that. So I don't want you to email me saying that during the uh, the quiz, somebody knock your door, so you got interrupted. So you need to take another quiz. No, that's not possible. Okay. So please make sure. That's why I give you one week to actually choose any time slot to do the quiz. Right. Okay. So now over here, can I? Can you work on the quizzes with your classmates? No, strictly no. Collaborating with anyone to complete a quiz is considered as a breach of academic dishonesty. Okay, it's a breach. Okay, and then. Also, you should you should not share any of your quiz questions with your friend who's gonna take the quiz later within the week. So that's also considered as cheating. Okay. So now, very important for your learning, what would be the best way for yourself to get prepared for the quizzes? So that's the best for your learning. Okay. So you're encouraged to study the lecture and tutorial uh, materials in groups if you know any friend. Uh, if or if you want to phone some study group, let me know. Maybe I can put you into the group. And then uh, make sure you study in group and then you can ask me questions as a group. Um, you're more than welcome to do so. And then the quiz is, is actually open booked and also you got one way to complete it. So the quizzes are really meant to help you to do self-assessment, to really know how well you're doing on a weekly basis. So really take advantage of this, be honest, and then study as, uh, as thoroughly as you can. Okay, so you can get the most out of this course. Okay. All right, so that's about the weekly quizzes. Hopefully I cover everything essential about the quizzes. Let me switch to uh, ex expected workload. So this table here, it's just like a tabular format for the previous course calendar I discussed over here. So now it's just for your convenience. So for every week, you can simply go to this particular week to know what you are expected to complete for that particular week. For example, for week number one, you should really try to complete at least the first six to seven hours of the Lex Zero introductory tutorial video. Remember, that's 10 hours. And then for the following week, for week number two, you should really com complete the remaining three to four hours so you will be properly ready for your lab number one. Okay. And then for week number two, for example, you also got to work on lab, on lab number one, which will be released. And then you will, you will optionally attend a Q&A session for W1, which was released in the previous week. And then you have to uh, also study the lecture videos uh, for W2, which will be released newly for that week, right? And also get a completed quiz by Friday, right? Everything is consistent with what I said. So this is like a, for your convenience. You can definitely download this syllabus here, uh, use it as a checklist for you. So you can plan your week or even month uh, way in advance. So here I'm telling you exactly what you, you really should uh, be aware of. And for example, in week number three, if you found that in the beginning of week number three, when you see it, if you haven't finished the to, uh, the lecture video that you're supposed to finish in the previous week, right? Because remember in week number three, on Monday and Tuesday, there will be a Q&A session for W2 already. If you haven't really fin finished the, to, uh, the lecture videos, how can you ask good questions to me during the session to get the most out of me? So you're already behind. If you haven't even started for that particular lecture series, you're really behind. But don't be too frustrated if you're really behind. That's a very just uh, like a, a reminder, a friendly reminder to tell you you really gotta catch up. Okay, so plan beforehand. And this column here just tells you what's gonna be due for that particular week. Okay, so uh, you can look at that. So I don't need to repeat everything here. Okay, so next one I would like to talk about is uh, I think we pretty much covered uh, most of the stuff. And then uh, this is just another table here, just to summarize for each uh, lab session, the two lab ses sessions on a Wednesday, uh, what, uh, what you're supposed to, if you want to ask questions, what you're supposed to ask, okay? So week number one, it will be self-guided, so there'll be no TA during the lab session, okay? Just for week number one. For week number two and three, for example, you can zoom into the TA session, the Zoom session for lab number one questions, okay? 
And then, so be lab three, project phase one, project phase two, right? So that's uh, consistent with what I said. So this table here, it can be also handy for you uh, to look up what, what's really expected for that particular uh, week's lab sessions for you to ask questions. Okay, so now uh, the last section here, I believe, it is just about the tentative lecture topics over here. So because I'm still actively uh, pre-recording all the lecture videos for you, so I would say this is kind of tentative. If the, if there's any major, uh, there wouldn't be any major changes, but I might swap the order of the topics a little bit. But it would be a good starting point for you if you want to just have some preview of the topics that we're going to cover uh, throughout the course. We're going to cover a substantial amount of good design ideas. So hopefully you can really gain the most out of this course by following the grading scheme and also learning schedule I just presented to you. It's not, it's not a very conventional way of writing a course because we are doing th uh, things online. So I really want to do a little bit more on my side than I typically would so to help you learn. So that's my intention, okay? Okay, so that's about lecture topics. And now we are at the end of the lecture syllabus. Okay, so now we're done with the syllabus, okay? If you got any uh, unclarity that you feel, please get in touch with me. Okay, let me just go over what, uh, a few more slides and a few more slides, then we are done. Okay, so if you need any accommodation uh, about your situation, please let me know. You want to get in touch with me as soon as possible, and I just need some official documentation from you if possible. Okay. And then that will be end of uh, this video here. So I believe I have covered most of your questions here re re regarding the administrative side for this course. But if you got any question anytime, please send me an email early or make an appointment with me. I'm more than happy to help you.